What are we doing, Bet? Should we look and see what Toby's got? What you got? Oh, -ho! I've got this. <laughs> Hello, Bet. <laughs> I've got this. This is a Autocast C5 Lite. Now, this is all about Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on your bike. Android Auto? Yeah, or Apple CarPlay on your bike. How cool is that? Cool. Do you know what that is, Mark? No idea. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. But it right. looks really, really cool. So, in this modern age, get it very philosophical, philosophical here. Philosophical. That's the word, the word yeah. Anyway, yeah. Any old word will very do. Very thoughtful. How about that? Yeah. We all need a way of navigating, don't we? So I've got my Garmin XT on my bike. Mark's got his um, Navigator 6 that he's had repaired by GPS station in Germany and now yeah. works perfectly. So all those people who say, is it still working? Yeah, it's still working fine. But we go away on tours a lot and touring season's well underway and Mark's off globe trotting next week. Pyrenees. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Pyrenees. And I've got a couple of tours the end of the year in Spain. Best place in the world, by the way. Um, but we're having lots of clients come on our tours that want to navigate in a different way. So we send GPX files, ITN files, all those things off for TomToms and Garmin. Oh, I'm glad about that because I thought you were going to say like a sextant or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could do that, but we'd all we'd get lost, wouldn't we? Well, Why you would use one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so lots of people are using Google Maps and their phone. So you've seen our videos about quad lock and stuff, having your phone on the handlebars. And whilst I'm using that as a backup solution, the reasons I don't like my phone on the handlebars are because if you drop it, the whole life's wrecked, isn't it? You can't pay for stuff. It just adds so many problems, especially when you're away. And I've also been on tour with people that have had their phones, specifically iPhones, overheat when they really need them. So mine stays off me and I'm like a dedicated unit just for navigation. But we've got a lot of clients coming and they navigate via Waze, Google Maps, a whole host of other things that they have on their phone. But how do you get that on your bike without some sort of device? Ah. That device, I reckon. Yeah, this one, the, Auto, the Autocast Lite C5. Now, I saw this pop up on my Facebook feed continuously. I don't know why, continuously. And I looked into it and I thought, is this a scam? So I found some details on the company, looked through their website and asked them if we could review it. And they sent this unit to review for us. So this unit has got a five inch touchscreen panel, 800 nits brightness display. Doesn't mean anything to me, but 800 it's, nits. Yeah, it's how they measure the brightness of the screens oh, okay. apparently, but it's bright enough. IPX7 waterproof. It's multifunctional. There's a micro SD slot in it as well and a mini USB. It's all powered by USB um, and they provide everything in the box. But what I think is really quite special is as I open this box. Does it smell? No, it doesn't smell like um, anything really. Now, <laughs> not as not as good as the as the normal stuff. So I'm just going to wipe the screen because I wiped it this morning, but it was a bit cold when I left. So there's a bit of condensation on the outside. That is the unit. Now, what does that look like to you, Mark? It looks like, um, like an old Zumo or something like that, or well, a the, Tom Tommy the, thing. Yeah. Or? The first time I saw it, I thought this looks like the Tom Tom rider. Do you know the old ones with oh, the little yeah. peak or one unit? Maybe it is. It's really, really nice. So what you get in the box is you get the actual unit. So let's flip it out. The actual unit is only that. Wow. Now, how thin is that? Well, so it's got a SD card slot in there, micro SD, on off button, the pins to connect to the power that then connect to your bike, um, a speaker so you can hear the music, bits of rubber padding stopping it moving around in the cradle, nothing on the bottom, and you get your five inch touchscreen. And I think that might even be a microphone hole, that little hole there. Uh -huh. However, as good as it is, and I'm gonna show you how good it is, there's no battery in it. So it has to be powered by the bike. So if you have it on and then you turn the bike off, it powers down. But the good thing about it is because it's all about Android Auto and more importantly for us, because let's face it, that's the best system, CarPlay. 
Apple CarPlay. Well, I'm going to get something in the comments. No way you're going to get comments. No, but because you're running all the stuff on your phone, this just basically mirrors in a way that Apple have made CarPlay. So you have all of your apps available on this screen in front of you. So you can set your navigation on Waze or Google Maps or Apple Maps. You can um, play your music, stop, start it, all that sort of stuff. And it's Bluetooth, so you can Bluetooth it from your phone or connect via your phone via Bluetooth and wireless and that sort of stuff. But you can also connect it to your helmet. So you can get your turn by turn navigation. And for me, having the safety and peace of mind of having your phone in your pocket. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. So you get the unit and you get the cradle. Now the cradle is one molded plastic piece and this is the power and out the back is the lead and it all comes down to a proprietary and we proprietary connection. We've seen these on lots of Chinese gadgets, haven't we? Mm -hmm. But they're really good because you can only put it in one way and you'll see in a minute that there's a rubber ring that makes it waterproof. Loads of uh, dash cams have those, yeah. don't they? Or smaller versions of it. All. And then on the back here, you've got your um, mounting via your four screws if you wanted to. And it comes with a load of stuff to mount it, but it also comes with these hooks. I Are they ultimate add-on type hooks? I'm not sure. They're just a generic um, GPS hooks. Mm. The ones I use in the truck have got the same thing. And then you've got this little handy thumb screw. So when the unit goes in, it fits in on these lugs and then it clips in really nicely. But for added bit of security, you screw that in, which means that you can't then get it out or knock it out. Which I thought was a nice little feature. It's actually not a bad security feature that because I know, you know, somebody's going to try and pull that mm. out if they wanted to steal it, you know. And it, that means it delays them a little bit longer, which yeah. is all about, isn't it? Just enough to mean that they might get caught. So the other thing that's on here, because loads of Chinese stuff. I'm just laughing because the dog is now rolling on a back <laughs> Cover yourself up. It's got a up. stylus. So you oh, can wow. use a stylus. So for those people that have Where got sausage-sized fingers in here. I just put my sausage-sized yeah, finger you in You can there. use a stylus to make your selections on the screen as well. And that just fits into there and it clips in, so you've actually got little lugs in there to put your nails under to unclip it, so it's not gonna vibrate free. It's really quite good, isn't it? That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, obviously not, not for use on the bike, but when you stop stationary and you- <laughs> Can you imagine me riding along with <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> right, what else we got in the box? What's in the box? Right, we get instructions. Now, the only downside to these instructions are they're really basic. They say everything that they need to say, and it's very picture f in picture form, but they're, they're very Chinesey, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but some of the English could be a bit better. And when I was first connecting it all up, it tells you how to connect things. It couldn't be easier, but then there's a setting on there. Do you connect your headset to a certain part of the Bluetooth setting or do it on another? Well, we'll show you. All right. Right, so that's, that's the instructions. What else do we get? we get the other end of that cable and see that it's got that red yep. um, like rubber washer, which o makes seal. it waterproof. It's called an o -seal. O -seal. Oh. And in there, the two pins, and then you've got that lug there, and it will only fit in one way. Yep. So a fool could do it. Oh no, I've bent them. <laughs> <laughs> right, that screws no, so together. Ask me to do it. No, hell no. Hell no. So that screws together, and then on the end of it, you've got a USB. Brilliant. So initially I thought, why USB? And then I thought, well, on another bike that you might see on the channel, which happens to be like an RT, which might debut on the channel soon, that's got DIN sockets. That's not gonna go in there. But then I've got a DIN socket to normal power supply converter and then put in there a power supply converter into USB that then plugs in. Wow. New bikes like this one, this GSA, over here has got the Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth, the USB connection. Is that one or two USBs on there? Um, I think there's, I think there's two, but I'm not sure. But there's definitely yeah. one. Two on mine. Yeah, you got to hedge your bets. Right. What else do you get? Oh, hey, look at that. Yeah. You then get proper, proper RAM mounts. Are they RAM mounts? We have to say well, RAM, similar to RAM yeah. mounts. That's Sim the yeah, to similar to RAM mounts. So you can mount it in any way. That goes onto the back of the unit like that, if you wanted it on there. Screws so you on. could 
put it anywhere that you would normally use one of these connections. You get one of those, which I think is under for connecting on the handlebars or somewhere you've got a bolt that go through or underneath the wing mirrors of some bikes. So there's quite a few options. And then you, of course, get the rings to then put through here. Well, so they're you, a bit industrial, aren't they? They are, but they're really good because if you pan up this way, Mark, I'm if you wanted to way. fit it on the handlebars, ah. that's how you do it with the, the D rings going through and then screwing it in. So that I don't is think, very substantial. I don't think there's anywhere that you can't fit that, which I think is really good. So that's all the adapters. And then you get More. small screwdriver and small screws. Now, I would have liked them to have had better easier to find screw sizes because those screws go in the back of the unit into the gold um, nut housings and they're really really quite gold small. Gold nut housings? <laughs> Should we say threaded, we'll just say threaded housings shall we? Nut okay. housings? <laughs> Bloody squirrels everywhere. Well you know what I mean you can see them <laughs> um, but they're, they're really small and I would have liked something a little bit more substantial to be honest. Because um, of your big fingers? Well no not only that because if you lose those I would imagine that's quite a specialist size to find. If they were a little bit bigger, they might be more common in somebody's house rather than having to go and buy more. But they do come with spares. So you've not okay. just got the four, you've got a spare. What else do we get in here? We get a USB to, I think that's a micro USB, or you, you can see it anyway, a USB to a smaller USB um, connection. So presumably if you had a power supply and it only had that to power send the power bank, out, yeah. you could do that. And if you All want, that in one box. Yeah, if you wanted this mounted on your bike and properly uh, wired in, it comes with the wires to connect to your unit and to connect to the battery and the um, the ignition circuit. Wow! So it comes with everything you need and guess what what's the price of that do you think i was going to ask you that what do you think i would say uh 200 pounds not far off i think it's about 259 pounds compared the, to an xt which is 350 it is cheapest the xt2 that's just come out so you get navigation on there as well using your, your phones and navigation or yeah. whatever it is you've got downloaded now I think this is really quite good having Apple CarPlay or Android Auto because we have to talk about people that use <laughs> Android. I'm only joking. Um, no, you're not. If somebody nicked my Garmin, that's 350 quid. If you've got the GT, the Garmin XT2, that's 530 quid. It's a lot of money to lose, isn't it? I know 250 quid is. That's got all of my routes, got where I've been, all the stuff that you might want to keep private. If they nick that and power it up, and your phone isn't in connection range, they're not going to see anything because it's all on your phone. Well, the purists are going to say, and we, we, we have to say it is like, oh, my XT is fantastic and all the rest of it, and this is a cheap Chinese copy of something. Well, it's not a copy of anything at the moment because we haven't seen anything that does it. No. So this is probably a, a first. Well, and the thing is, manufacturers like Honda, um, I don't know whether I've seen any other manufacturers, but Honda with their Africa Twins, they've got Apple CarPlay actually on their TFT because people are using that sort of stuff. I think that's really quite a good little system. And it, Well, it is. I mean, I don't use CarPlay at all, but the way people's use of navigation systems is changing, like you yeah. say, I use Scenic. Uh, there's, what was the other one we did? Um, Kalimoto. Kalimoto. Yeah. There's loads of them. Yeah. You know, this is obviously the way people are going now. They want yeah. to do it using their own system, if you want. Yeah, and Google Maps is really good. It will tell you where there's a traffic jam instantly because it's got the yellow and the red and it's picking up how many phones are in one place on the road that aren't moving, you know, all that sort of stuff. But they've got all of, all of the roads. I mean, we're having some pretty spectacular roadworks down here, down the A30, having a proper dual carriageway built. So don't come down this summer because it'll be really busy. No, it will be busy. But every time they move, even over a weekend, move the roundabout over here or change the contraflow, it's on Google already. So you can see why people are using Google because they haven't got to up, wait for an update to find its way to Garmin or TomTom to be downloaded onto your device. It's interesting you're saying that Honda have uh, CarPlay on their Africa twin screen, it's obviously the way people are going and manufacturers are definitely going away from 
the this kind of thing, thing yeah. now because you know people don't necessarily need it. it was um was the guy the guy called Gary on Adventure who's on the BMW Owners Club mm -hmm. uh, website on uh, sorry Facebook group and he's got one of those carp items is it oh, okay. carp item from made it's yeah. the same system that's on AJP uh, trail bikes you're I just, think you're just using letters now aren't you I am yeah, yeah but it's like a it's like a tablet oh okay oh but yes got, but he's got everything on there yeah, yeah. You know? and so. You can see the way the manufacturers are going, like on the beer on the new RT, it's got this massive big screen where it's got yeah, all you know the your... connected app integrated. Yeah, there you and, go. So yeah. we're getting away from GPSs. Yeah. Although I will still for a long, long time just use a GPS. Dinosaur. Well, I am a dinosaur, <laughs> but I'm thinking, you know, when BMW update the GSA to the thirteen hundred, because we know it's coming. Is it a thirteen hundred or fourteen hundred? I don't know, but this just putting that you know, out there. It's got to be out there, isn't it? The se it's no secret. I reckon that that's going to have a bigger TFT with the integration, like the RT for sat nav. Now that's great. The connected it has to be app a wrap around well, screen because it's so big. Yeah, <laughs> the, the connected app for BMW is really good. Now they seem to have ironed out lots of the problems. The maps are really good. I think they come from TomTom Tom originally, so they are good maps. Whatever we think about TomTom, Tom, that's just the unit. The actual mapping system's good. Um, but does that mean that we're then going to have to spend more money to then buy the cradle for the sat navs that we still want to use? Mm. And are we putting out all our eggs into one basket? Because if mm -hmm. something happens with the TFT, you've now got no sat nav. Mm. It's really scary, isn't it? So I need to run inside and get the keys and then we'll power it on, shall we? Okay. Right, so we're gonna plug it in and turn the bike on. So we've just plugged it in, we've turned the bike on. Yeah, and as you can see, the colors are really good, but it's a really reflective screen. And, and it starts off with a... GSA. GSA, is yeah. it 100 years GSA? Or is it the 40 years? 40 years, whatever yeah. it is. So you can see it's downloading data and this is downloading data from my phone that we're recording on. So it gives you Android Auto, which we can't display, but we've not got an Android phone. Apple CarPlay, AirPlay. Let's go back to the menu. Oh, which is God, there. one mistake. Every move yeah. is a thousand mistakes. Yeah. So this is the screen that it sets you up um, first off. So you've got your home, time, and it takes it from your phone. Um, Apple CarPlay when it's connected, the brightness, sound, and then back. Um, to the main menu, Android Auto, CarPlay, AirPlay, settings, micro SD, so you can play stuff off of micro SD, uh, EMTBT. I'm not sure why it's called EMT, but I've it's got a headset there, so I've connected my headset to it, and my phone is connected to this, so it's really simple. You go into the settings, and you've got all of the system settings. So you can change the wallpaper, the language, date, time, update it, headset, mic. You can change loads of stuff system version it will give you loads of information about it so if i go back it's got wi-fi so you can change your password so it comes with a um a really easy to guess password i think that's all eight my eyes are old it is, but yeah. it's all eight it is i'll just go right in there oh, sorry there you go it's all right all eight yeah right oh then you've got your bluetooth tells you what you're connected to, what your address, you're paired. So it will tell you what you've got paired on your thing. So it's got my uh, interphone and my phone. And it will allow you to discover. And it's as simple as going into discover, going into search, having your phone or your headset, specifically for this, your phone, on Bluetooth discovery mode, finds it, pair it as usual, like everything else. It's really simple. Then you've got display. So display settings, um, your bright level in the day, bright level at night. So you can set those by numbers really easy with a slider, which is really good. And the touchscreen works so well. Sound effects. You can have vo vo volume for your master volume. Um, what's EQ? Equalizer. That's it. Equalizer. You can, so you can change it to your liking. Loudness. You can turn it on and off so it's loud or it boosts the, boosts the loudness factory settings and you can put your factory settings in there the passwords all in the instructions you can change your system volume navi volume carplay volume so you can have, have them all at different volumes which is really good isn't it and then when you go back to your home screen to connect the headset i went into here takes you into the bluetooth search and it looks for your um headset and this one i've got the um 
pack talk on there. Um, and then you click on Apple CarPlay and there are all of your apps. Wow. Just as you would have them on any other vehicle. And what you do is you go into Apple, into your phone, or your iPhone, into the settings, it's CarPlay. Just taking it straight off your, yeah, yeah. off your phone. Yeah, and you can move the apps around. So if the ones that you use aren't the phone, music and apps, you can move them all around. And you see you've got dots down here. You can just scroll across and you can use all the other apps that are available in the CarPlay Apple ecosystem. So I've got WhatsApp and Waze. And if you want to use Waze, you just press Waze. I want to find somewhere. Well, let's go to Ocean BMW in Penryn. We're all set. Let's go. Well, that was there quick. There you go. That was quick. Yeah, it is. And it's really, really good because you've got split screens as well. So Apple CarPlay comes with this split screen. So not only do you get um, your navigation, what music you're listening to, don't judge me, it's a great song. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you get your turn by turn it's as well. better than the ABBA song you normally have. <laughs> But you get your turn by turn there as well. If you want it bigger, you just click on it, it goes to the app. If you want to stop it, just stop it. It couldn't be simpler. It's exactly the same as you would use in any CarPlay system in any car that you have with an Apple. And Android is going to be just the same. It's just we can't show you Android because we haven't got any Android phones. So you can play your music, you've got all the usual settings, you know, shuffle, reload, or whatever these all mean. You can go back to your library, select your library, your playlist, all that sort of stuff. But it means that as soon as this is turned off, there is no data on here at all, unless you've got an SD card in with your own data on it. Wow. So when you walk away, if somebody was to steal this, they don't know where you've been, where you're going, where your home is. Because so many people set up on their sat nav, home, home yeah. work, <laughs> and all the, all the places that you would normally go. If you've got radio and you use um, radio apps, you can Always use radio as well. People put work in their, in their sat nav. I know, it's crazy, like, isn't it? It's not as if they don't go yeah. there most days. But I think this unit is really good. The only thing that I wish it would have had is some sort of battery in there because what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn your bike off, Mark. Now, obviously, with the BMWs, it's about 30 seconds to a minute, isn't it, before the power goes from the USB. But if I just pull out the USB socket, off, it turns it off. So, Mark, you were saying the interesting thing being... Well, we've highlighted an issue there, is how shiny that screen is. Yeah. But, having said that, I had it on my other bike, which will be on the channel at some point, taking it to Ocean BMW, in much the same sort of weather like this. Sunny, overcast, but it was later in the day, so the sun was lower. And because the screen's so bright, I didn't really see any problems with it. I didn't wasn't looking at it thinking I can't read that because the screen was so bright. Obviously, if you're out in direct sunlight, it might cause an issue, but it comes with its own little sunshade. Might be enough, certainly was for me, but I think that's a really, really great little unit. For 250 quid, I like it. really slim. If it gets nicked, yes, it's 250 quid, but all your data's still yours. Cool. I, I, I think it's a really good unit. So thank you to, um, the guys over in China that sent it to us. So this is the Autocast C5 Lite, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto unit, specifically designed for motorbikes. Now, of course, you could mount it in a car, couldn't you? Could do, You've got enough mounting but options there. Great little unit, I think you should get one. And there might even be an affiliate link or something where you won't pay anything extra. You might even get a bit of a discount, but we might get a tiny, tiny slice of what you paid for it. So down in the description, check it out. Go and get yours. Get touring. I think it's brilliant. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you in the next video. Thumbs up, subscribe, do all that business, and we'll see you in the very next video.